All right, next on the agenda, um, we're down to the action agenda. And the first thing on there is the North Carolina Board, uh, School Board Action Center, um, which is a request for $6,000 for that organization. Um, this, I, Bob Reinhardt is a member of this committee, has been asked to be on this, uh, on this action center. And uh, he called me at the last moment, said we could would table it if we wanted to, to the next meeting. Um, we're having some regional, um, state school board regional meetings coming up where we'll learn more about this. Um, but we also have all, a lot of the information in front of us. So at this time, um, I would like a motion from the board either to table it to our next meeting or a motion to approve it. Mr. Chair, I would move that we table it. I know that we are going to hear about it at the regional meetings because I saw it on there. and and to learn more about it if we don't jeopardize perhaps doing this by waiting a month i would move that we table it so that we hear some more information and could discuss it and decide what to do or not to do in a more okay is there is there a second manner. for this I'll, I'll second all right any discussion all right all those in favor well, i did have a point to make which I'm not sure Again, we'll tabling be tabling it. You don't really have a discussion, do you, no. Mr. Campbell? Okay. Yeah. And we'll be discussing it <laughs> as much as you want to at our next okay. meeting. <laughs> so um, so uh, all those in favor of the motion to table it, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay. That was pretty quick. Um, all right, next on the agenda item is the school lunch prices for 2013-2014. Um, there's a motion. Uh, Ms. Baldwin, do you want to, would you like to make that motion? Okay, and it is slightly different than the one on the paper. That's fine. Um, I move that we reverse the decision to raise lunch prices uh, for the 2013-14 school year um, based on the fact that a waiver uh, exists that we are eligible for. Let me repeat that. Oh, you start, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm making the motion that we reverse the decision made in June to raise school lunch prices for the 2013-14 school year and uh, uh, because there is a waiver uh, and we are eligible for that waiver. Ms. Jackson, did you catch that? I did, but what about the last part? She I think, she just, part I think she's skipping the last part of that you are, motion. You are striking the last no part day. of that? No, no, date. Date. no date. Right. I mean, we could say as of September 16th, okay. if you want to so add that. It was, it was really the 16th. There was just a typo on the agenda. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. okay. Uh, any, dis uh, do you want any discussion at this point? I could start since, um, yeah, I, I found out that another school district's already reversed their decision. Uh, that was Alamance County. <laughs> Um, I talked to Dr. Lynn Harvey uh, because the North Carolina School Board Association actually did a presentation uh, on this at a conference this summer and um, they talked about how uh, lunch participation is going down and I think you saw some of the figures tonight uh, that it's only I think 60 some percent I wrote it down somewhere 41% uh, of the uh, the kids are participating in breakfast and of course it's free but only 67 um, percent was it, Partic wasn't it? participating in the lunch and the, overall the whole state uh, has declined three percent in lunch participation and the school board association made a point to say that um, the working poor this is this is really hurting those families who are not eligible for free or reduced lunch they're sort of on the borderline especially and um, you know, we want those kids not to fall through the cracks and to be able to participate in the lunch program. And I know 10 cents or 15 cent reduction, depending on the type of meal, doesn't sound like a lot, uh, but it adds up. It adds up to $18 a year, even if you have more than one child. Um, it's really, it's 18 to $27, depending on the type of meal purchased, uh, that these parents are having to pay extra. And these parents are counting their pennies we all know the economy's not recovering as fast as we'd like it to um, so that's basically my premise this waiver uh, was made available starting in May that uh, we could um, 
be exempted from this because we have, um, I believe it's three months operating expenses in an undesignated fund. And of course, I, you're, you're welcome to get up here and, and help us with this too, uh, uh, Ms. Payne. That'd be great. Sure. Um, and, and thank you for what you're saying, Ms. Baldwin and, and members of the board. I will share what I can with you. We, as you know, I started on January 1st and was not aware that a waiver was available. Um, learned that in the past few weeks. However, I did not look at the possibility of lowering meal prices because I was very excited that um, I was, I had walked back into the role that I had walked into knowing that we were in desperate need of using some of the excess operating balance, which at this time is a .56. We are allowed to carry three months. So we have uh, about $800,000. And in my presentation earlier, you saw that just desperately needed equipment was through t almost 300000 rounding it up. Um, so not trying to get involved in, in your decision as the board, but would like for possibly to share school meal comparisons, looking at our surrounding counties, Buncombe, Haywood, Henderson. Elementary prices were 210 last year. We only increased them to 215 this year, so we going backwards a dime would probably go back several years ago. And then we went up in the middle and the high. Of course, participation is the highest in the elementary, so that would be the largest financial impact. But that being said, um, I also want to go back to some of our accomplishments and our accomplishments being that we're working with ASAP to support our local farmers to provide more fresh fruits and vegetables which do come at a higher cost. We are changing our biscuit choices from uh, what I have called and they know that I don't like them a bag, a biscuit in a bag which is in a mylar bag heated looks like convenience food. We are going back to a fresh baked biscuit with fresh meat protein, if you will, in the center and wrapped. So I am asking that we take that into consideration um, when a decision is made, sharing that. And I, I do know that Alamance Burlington did adopt that waiver and also Cabarrus County adopted that waiver and have spoken with the State Department and I'm asking to use that money to improve food quality food service operations, purchasing food service equipment, and um, bringing, getting back to the fundamentals with the program. Yeah, thank you so much, Ms. Payne. <clears throat> Ms. Payne, can I, can I ask you just to, and again, I, you know, I certainly, we certainly understand the you know, challenges out there with, with the economy, uh, but, but you referenced the, the healthy foods and moving to the healthy and, and removing some of the items that I think this board is, is rightfully challenged. And so we're moving in that direction. But I've also read from a national standpoint that, that moving toward the healthier food, there's a cost that comes with that. That's and correct. so um, I, I'm probably putting you on the spot, but how confident do you feel in, in moving with the healthier items at this point in time do you feel like you're going to be able to maintain the the because a la carte i think brought in a quite a bit of funding from what i understand in the past listening to child nutrition directors and do you anticipate that that will re remain the same do you anticipate that there will be a potential loss what? dr bond when i expect a potential loss we are offering 30 percent less choices than we were in the prior year we have chosen to be more aggressive than a lot of our colleagues in the state because we are in a community that is very health conscious. We want to serve our parents. We want the perception of our program to be um, good. So that being said, I expect a 30% decrease in uh, a la carte sales. And I also know that we have um, vending machines in high schools and middle schools that they are very um, conscious that they are not on during meal time, but they are moving toward a wellness plan at a different pace than we are. So that will also affect us because some of our students can wait and buy things later in the day. And um, what I'm doing every day is 
looking and running reports every evening to make sure that we are staying financially sound as we I don't want to sound like a renegade and say that I'm rolling the dice, but we are rolling the dice. We are rolling the dice, but we are trusting that with my management team and our cafeteria staff that we can market our program uh, of, and become community partners with ASAP and anyone else that is interested in the child nutrition program to get the support so that parents are telling their children we are the best meal for the best value in town. Mr. Chair, I would ask this board to um, not support Ms. Baldwin's motion in light of the fact that we have been given this information and it seems that we are making multiple changes and they sound very good and sound, but I believe we need to be conscious of the fact that it's costing more money and we don't actually know what the outcome is. And um, I would also sensitize the members of the board, some of you, most of you don't remember, but a long time ago, this board was in a situation where we were in the red a long time ago. And it took the board, uh, I'm sorry to use the same word twice, but a very long time to position themselves so that we were in the black. And those board members at that time were adamant about us being cautious as a board to make good decisions that we would stay in the black and be um, supporting our own our own equipment our own repairs and um, not get in a situation where we have to buy, borrow from other funds to fund the um, school food program anybody else mr chair i have a couple of questions if we'll go ahead mr plus Ms. Payne, what I think you maybe referred to it uh, earlier, but the the um, counties around us, Asheville City, Henderson County, Haywood County, how, how do our prices compare to what they're doing? Um, I don't have Asheville Cities. I do have Haywood County and Henderson County, and actually uh, Henderson County is higher than us for their elementary lunches. Uh, Haywood, Buncombe run the same. So Henderson has gone higher on the elementary and uh, lower on the increase for middle and high. And in the, uh, a nickel, we're a nickel. So we're very fair, uh, not standing out. 235, we have 235 for lunches for high school with Haywood and Buncombe. Henderson's 230. Uh, Buncombe Elementary 210 for lunch, Haywood 210, and Henderson 215. So they, they distributed their increases differently. So on the average, we really are the same. Could, could I ask a, a couple of questions? Uh, did, I, did I interrupt? I didn't interrupt anybody. Did I? Please go ahead. Um, your, your, uh, your assessment or your analysis of, of uh, the operating expenses and the things that are changing based on the, the uh, changes in programming, if you will. Um, do you think you'll have a better handle on that by the 1st of November, or do you anticipate that it's really going to take you a full year to get a handle on that? Um, and the reason for my question is I, I, I'm cautious because of uh, I'm aware of, I wasn't on this board, but I'm aware of those days uh, where we didn't operate like we needed to, and we need to be sufficient uh, or efficient in how we do those types of things for our for our constituents and for our children and, and faculty staff etc uh, but the reason for my question is if, if we don't know today if you felt like you would know in December would there be anything that would preclude this board from after further analysis of where we are today if we came to, if you came to us at some point in time within the school year and said things are better we are able to do better financially than where we are. I think today I would be comfortable recommending to you to go back to last year's prices. And I, I, I've heard some different things. Going back 10 cents, you indicated that we're only five right, cents. Five cent increase. So five cent be, increase. Yes. I don't want to reduce to a level that's below where we were last year. Right. Um, so that's a long winded, probably not very bright question. No, but can it you, actually is. And it's a very fair that? question. 
And, and the reason I don't have figures for you today is because we started feeding students well, I, I understand on August why we 25th. Don't have them. No, I understand so that. I, I will use the same figure. So I can answer that question in November because I use the same figures that um, every child nutrition program in the state of North Carolina uses, and we base our statistical data and um, looking into the crystal ball, if you will, based off of October participation. So that's something that we could revisit in November. And then we also use March of 2014. We could revisit in April. And, and my hope is that I can use the projected increase to increase participation and also to stabilize this program so that we don't have to increase next year. And I just want to clarify, Pat, that the, the motion is just to reverse it to back to the 2012-13. Um, okay, so the 10 before, cents. So the 10 cent may not be the actual number. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that's that's taken out. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah does, I was, that, does that answer your question? Well, so then it leads me to another question, if I can continue, Ms. Chair, and this may be an answer from Dr. Baldwin or from you. Uh, the waiver. Mm -hmm. what, what does that mean? How did we qualify? What does, who, who's granting that waiver? And the what, waiver, in essence, does it do? And, and Ms. Baldwin, if you'd like to speak to the definition mm -hmm. of the waiver. The, the, you can. Okay. <laughs> the waiver was in place for school systems that had an excess of three months operating balance. When? Um, when, when is that analysis made? Because that very, it's got to vary with every system in the state because you get federal dollars on a different budget than when our budget is. Uh, this was the paperwork that I have in front of me is from the close of school year, which would have been when they finalized. This is actually May 2013. So the, the, an excess of that amount Correct. at that time. Correct. Okay. So it is a snapshot in time. Okay. So I've worked with Roger Warren over the last few days and spoken with Bernie Sosha because he was involved right. um, during the transition after Ms. Von Hensley retired. So I wanted to make sure that I was brought up to speed. And that excess cash has been allocated in the form of a spend down plan that Lynette Von Hensley right. uh, submitted to uh, DPI, Several. to the state, remember? Okay, so what I am asking, that that is a necessary spend down plan because she was not spending, so the money has been there. She was not spending that money. She was not, uh, as of today, Roger, if I'm not mistaken, 15,000 had been spent prior to my coming on board. Um, that being said, I have gone to schools. I have my supervisors are my eyes and ears. My cafeteria managers are my eyes and ears. And we have folks out there working with equipment that is, well, they're not working. So they're working around equipment that is not working. So That needs to be replaced. Please, yes. So Replaced and repaired. I'm sorry. I know there was 600000 over $600,000 in the spend down plan last year. Uh-huh. Um, has, are you saying that only 15000 was <clears throat> was spent? Right, of that right now my 000. excess cash resource is 880 and as of today, I have, uh, with the equipment needs, um, we still have about 500000 and that is before we, I mean, this is from July 1st until today, September 5th, I believe, or 6th, 5th. And um, so that's before we even establish a regular maintenance. This is just emergency 911, please fix so that we can work. So you're saying we have $880,000 in excess funds, and you're, but you're planning to spend 280 On immediate needs, on immediate needs. We can develop a long-term, this is a short-term strategy. But the, the, the cost differential and where you're anticipating losing revenue hasn't occurred yet. The time hasn't taken, we haven't had school long enough for you to. True, that's so, right, so, that's right. So you've got to have some buffer there. That's correct. To, to, to be able to, and to be able to work towards what you anticipate is going to happen. That's if it correct. doesn't happen, then you'll wind up with some money there that could be either brought back to this board asking for a recommendation to do X or, or whatever. Correct. And, and I guess my last question would be, and I, I hate to I don't like to do this, but this I promise this will be the last question I ask, and maybe this is for Dr. Baldwin. I, I'm not, it's just the way I'm geared. I, I prefer for these types of recommendations to come from the schools and or the system level, superintendent and or his staff. Would you, or would you, have brought this, rec do you recommend 
that this board adopt this motion? And if you're uncomfortable answering that question, don't answer it. But <laughs> I'm going to ask it anyway. Well, because you be, well, and the reason I ask, you're, you're the you're the boots on the ground that deal with this on a daily basis and have to analyze this and make make it work. The gentleman mentioned the law of unintended consequences earlier. I, I've I've heard that and used that, and you and I've talked about that. I've used that for years, and that that's that's always my concern with anything we do that's something like this. Um, and so if you have a thought, Dr. Baldwin, either, either or, as it relates to that, I would appreciate hearing it. Well, my boots on the ground uh, don't include the boots inside the kitchen and child nutrition, so I've really got to, uh, to depend on, uh, on our expert, uh, which, uh, which, which certainly Ms. Payne is. And I don't want to detract from the mayor uh, what Mrs. Baldwin's brought to the table, because I do, again, we, we, we need to try to help our families out there as much as possible. But on the other hand, we've got to, we've got to have an efficient budget. Um, your budget stands alone. Um, you're responsible at the end of that school year not to be in the hole. So my point and my concern is, um, you know, I think it was very, a very positive bit of news coming in here and saying, look, we are moving toward uh, providing healthy nutrition out in our uh, cafeterias. But I also have heard enough from superintendents and have read enough on, from the national standpoint in that what comes with being healthy, we all have to understand, and it makes sense, makes sense in our own home when we go purchase food, is that there is a, a cost that comes with that. So uh, how do we find that balance? Uh, in my opinion, I think you may have, have come upon that balance by saying, look, Let's get the boots on the ground. Let's assess this. Come back to the board when, again, Ms. Payne, when you feel comfortable in having the amount and correct data to make a decision on. And, um, and I appreciate that. I don't have that. I can gather that in October. But just for just just one example, and I have been meeting with our vendor broker community every uh, several a week, as a matter of fact, to have a comfort level with the prices that we're paying for food. Um, one example is our whole grain bread, uh, hot dog bun, which we did not have today, and we are seeking other opportunities from last year of a white hot dog bun, this year whole grain hot dog bun, 68% increase. 68% increase with our bread. So we're looking for another bread or we've asked our bread company to revisit their contract pricing. And that's not isolated to us because you're in a consortium in a group of with, Within systems, a cooperative, that's a cooperative correct. Group that, and, so that, that's, that's being, that's not just coming to Buckham County. Correct. That price is being. Correct. Correct. Any um, other? Can I just make a Please. statement? Please. Um, I'm sorry. You know, as many of y'all know, my background is in health. So I consider this price, this increase, more of an investment in our students' health. Um, I guess I think of it more as a part of a preventative maintenance plan. Um, it's, it's a lot cheaper to pay the increase in a lunch than it is for parents to take days off of work to stay home with a sick child because they are not getting the adequate nutrition that they need to get. And there's something to be said about the healthy fruit and vegetables mm -hmm. option. Um, and you're right, it's going to, I can't see how it could cost the same or less to offer the fresh fruits and vegetables um, and make it where the children will want to eat them. Right. Um, but I, I really feel like this still will help the community um, you know, Dr. Body, you were concerned about, about our families, but I think if you looked at the big picture, you know, in the big scheme of things, it will actually help our students stay healthier and miss less school, which then, of course, um, has the parents' ability to be at work, and I, I just th see that as a, maybe an intended consequence that we'd like to have. Okay. Uh, I, think well, I just wanted to close by saying that, <clears throat> I mean, I'm willing to table this until next month when we can get financial figures, but I do have concerns of having an $880,000 excess while we're charging parents what I call a tax 
this is essentially a tax on paying parents of depending on the meal, whether it's elementary, it's five cents, 10 cents for the uh, middle school and high school and 15 cents for the extreme meals. Like I said, it's 18 to $27 more per child. Um, per and year? Per year, right? Was that the, right, was that per the year, per year, right. What? And um, basically, I, I feel like people are hurting, they can't afford school supplies. Uh, much less now we're seeing the decline in the, the school lunch participation for those families, particularly the working poor families. And um, I just cannot stomach buying more equipment when we've got families hurting like this. And um, I know I talked to some cafeteria people. One of them said, well, we, they bought this steamer last year, this expensive piece of equipment. And um, we're not using it. We don't want to use it. We never needed it. So. I, I really, um, you know, I'm really concerned about uh, building up excess funds like this when uh, people are hurting. One thing about that, um, you know, it, the terminology is interesting because excess funds or spin down, I mean, in, in a business world, you'd call that a capital investment. Um, and I can't imagine a business not investing in the equipment that they're using to run their operation. A and some of it is just semantics, but I think that's important. And when you say spin down or excess funds, and I don't mean you, Lisa, I just meant in general yeah. when you use those terms, it connotes waste, whereas in a business world, you wouldn't say that. You'd say, I want to be investing in capital. Um, and I see us as, as doing that. Um, okay, so, so I wanna, can amend the motion that we table it until would next month be enough uh, time? October would not be, Miss Baldwin, mm -hmm. because I need November data. I mean, I'm sorry, October okay. data. So if we could look at it in November, okay. that would give me a week to organize. That would be great. Okay, no problem. Yeah. All right, um, I have a motion from Miss Baldwin to table it till November. Is there a second? Right. I'll second. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? All right. Uh, all those in favor of tabling it, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Payne. You've been busy tonight. Uh, oh, you're going to be back up here, maybe. <laughs> um, I'm going to follow that up with the child nutrition procurement plan, which uh, Miss Baldwin asked that we move from the consent agenda up um, to the action agenda. And Miss Baldwin, did you have anything specific that you wanted to? ask about that we need a mo do we need a motion first mr chair before we discuss motion to approve, yeah. motion uh, to is, approve there motion, uh, is there a motion is there a motion to approve the I'll child make, nutrition i'll make the motion to approve i'll there, second it mr chair they're ahead of me all right miss baldwin would you like to ask your questions yeah I, and i so appreciate this information um Um, I guess I was just curious if, um, you know, when I go shopping, I can buy generic brands and, and that sort of thing. And I didn't know if, um, if that's true when you're buying on such a large scale. Um, I just happened to be in Sam's Club and I saw uh, the bread. What's it called? It's called Bimbo Bread. I'd never heard of this bread. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was more expensive than the generic that I buy at uh, another store. And so that's why it, it piqued my curiosity as to whether, um, you know, we can, um, you know, purchase generic type food as opposed to brand name types. So I did see this spread somewhere on Welcome the back. list. Welcome Sorry. Back. <laughs> Welcome back. Actually, oh, Bimbo is. Breads is the company that bought Sarah Lee, which has mm -hmm. caused our Sarah Lee prices oh, okay. to increase. So I learned a lot about Bimbo Breakers the other day, <laughs> <laughs> probably more than I ever wanted to know. Uh, they have bought Dolly Madison, just several people. To answer your question, Ms. Baldwin, and, and for your uh, members of the board, procurement is a um, it is a year contract typically, and we do buy with a large Western North Carolina buying group. You cannot veer off of that contract uh, just to purchase a generic item that's less expensive. Prior to the contract being written, it is the responsibility of the child nutrition director and her staff, his or her staff, and, and any cooperative members that they serve with to work with vendors and brokers. And um, 
uh, negotiate pricing and negotiate product that meets the, the school regulations before that contract is written. Then it is, would be my job to do due diligence to make sure that we have chosen the healthiest uh, products available at the most affordable price and find alternatives so that we keep competitive pricing open so that when a bid is written, the specs are tight and when a bid is released, the prices have been negotiated and we are typically locked into those uh, prices for one year unless we allow a market escalation, de-escalation based on um, increases. Mm -hmm. Does that answer? Yes, and I guess because I see pet dairy on here and I think in the grocery store that's the most expensive milk possible. I mean, are they really cheaper than, than other milk companies? Typically any company when they're serving the K-12 has money set aside because we are, we, are, um, we are a necessary evil, if you will, in the business world. Uh, they have, they charge higher prices in the grocery store so our margins can be lower. They want our business. There's a lot of social responsibility in being able to say that you serve the K-12 segment, so that's part of our negotiation. And like Pizza Hut, we're buying pizzas already made. That's got to be really expensive. Uh, can we make more foods from scratch? I mean, you're talking about being healthier, and to me, it's cheaper to make from scratch and healthier, and um, I just would rather not see um, a lot of these uh, pre-made products that are more expensive. And that goes back to my presentation where I said we are going to the higher quality, the meals made from um, uh, mm -hmm. prepared right. at the site level. I have already met with Pizza Hut. We are moving away from Pizza Hut in the intermediate schools. Pizza Hut knows that I'm watching every move that they make. However, their price did win this year, so they did have the lowest negotiated pricing. But I'm watching to make sure that they are indeed serving uh, the nutritious quality product that the bid specification has asked for. Also to make sure that their drivers are clean, the vehicles are clean, and that we're maintaining safe temperatures. And we have brought back frozen uh, a, it's a Big Daddy's, which is a school specific, and, and when you, I don't want to, we, ha, we don't have any students, so I can say this, school mm -hmm. pizza is healthier than uh -huh. regular pizza. <laughs> but you know, you don't want to say that out loud <laughs> for marketing reasons. Uh -huh. But uh, believe me, we're looking at every angle, and, and this year the Western North Carolina Cooperative did roll over mm -hmm. their bid, and I have asked that they not roll over their bid next year so we can go out and look for other distributors and more competitive pricing. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Pepsi Cola, what are we getting from Pepsi? Pepsi Cola, mm -hmm. uh, actually, with the decrease in a la carte sales, we have lost some Pepsi Cola business because uh, U.S. Foods is allowed, you want the competitive pricing. U.S. Foods bid on the 12.9 ounce Gatorades that we're now using as opposed to the 20. U.S. Foods was considerably less expensive. And we are, so Pepsi, and I have, we met week before last, they are losing some of our business but they know that we are not going to roll over and they have the opportunity to come to the table with competitive pricing next year. How that has affected us goes back to this excess money that I have because Pepsi is taking some of their large coolers and merchandisers out of the schools. They are not leaving with us without but they are doing a swap program. For example, uh, Owen Middle School had a large double door merchandiser that was provided by Pepsi. We will not be purchasing enough Pepsi products to uh, justify them leaving that piece of equipment there. So they're going to give her a barrel with some ice or I may have to go out. The child nutrition funds, we may have to buy some okay. merchandisers. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and I'm just curious if we're buying some of the USDA foods that are supposed to be cheaper. I don't know a lot. Of, I know other school districts do this to save money. Do you know what? Well, the, what that is, and, and, and is, I don't want to say that it's a misperception, but that is money that the, U, of the federal government gives us. Last year it was 17.5 cents per plate based on participation. So they take our participation numbers and we are giving us a set dollar amount that we can purchase USDA donated foods. And yes, Buncombe County has a warehouse and we are very actively involved in that program. And I got emails today like great tomatoes. That's a wonderful way to get uh, North Carolina grown produce. But unfortunately with the weather we're seeing crops. I'm sorry they're being canceled. I'm sorry they're being canceled. So um, 
as but they return that money to our program and we're able to reallocate so and we're, we actually just reallocated eighty thousand dollars to fresh fruits and vegetables for the spring okay great okay. so I just want to clarify that next year you've requested that we not roll over that the, your co-op doesn't roll over and I think that's wonderful Correct. I'm very very happy with that and I've heard so many wonderful things about you so far from your cafeteria people good and uh, so I just want to let you know that too good I'm and very committed to the students yeah. and to our employees mm -hmm. and to everyone in this room yeah thank you for your diligence on this thank you I believe this person, you, the staff member's initiation is over. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank you for your cooperation. Certainly, <laughs> certainly. Very glad. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Ms. Payne. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so there's a motion on the floor to approve the Child Nutrition Procurement Plan. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? motion passes uh, number two I'll just I guess I'm going out of order a little bit but we'll go to um, approval of uh, is there is there a motion to approve board member training which was on the consent agenda uh, I'll make the motion because I asked for it to be moved um, I'm is, not exactly sure what to say other than well yes are you gonna you make that motion I'll make the motion is there a second I'll second it okay um, is there discussion well, I can talk about it if you want me to, since I've asked for the, the $20 reimbursement for the training and um, for it to count towards school board credit, because uh, I did have training from this group in the past, and it was counted um, as credit. Uh, and the speakers, we have the State Board of Education um, chair, which is our lieutenant governor. Um, he's not the chair of the State Board of Education. <coughs> Mr. Kobe is the chair of the State Board of Education. Okay, well, he's, he's a member of the State Board of Education. Okay, he's a member of the State Board. I'm sorry, I apologize. A member of the State Board of Education, um, our lieutenant governor. And um, it's about the Common Core. Um, I've gotten several letters. We've probably all gotten them about um, people with concerns about the Common Core. Um, I've heard DPI presentations about Common Core. I want to hear all sides of the issue. Um, I think I value diversity of thought, and I want to see what this group of people, there's a Stanford University uh, person there. There are other um, education professionals that will be presenting about the Common Core and concerns. And I think it was today or yesterday I sent you an email about New Hanover County, our sister um, school population is the same in both counties, Wilmington, um, that they have just sent a resolution to the State Board of Education asking for clarification about different issues with the Common Core. Um, so I think the more I can learn about it, the better. And I'll be happy to, to write a report and bring it back to the board. I, I have to, I think all of us can go to and do whatever we'd like to do. My, my curiosity is the registration for the event is by invitation only. Is that accurate? That is what uh, the invitation said. I wasn't invited. I, I'm not aware unless somebody's going to tell me differently than any other board member was invited. And it's it, when, when that occur. I'm just curious as to what. I have no control over. I don't know why they did it that way. Um, there's a phone number you can call. And you could ask, perhaps, to to go to it. I don't know. Is, is Mr. Chairman, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. May, may I make a statement to that? Sure. Um, Ms. Baldwin, I actually did make that call this morning, and was told that it was by invitation only, um, and that they did not have the seat for me because of the invitation not coming to me. Um, after going around several minutes about how they came to the conclusion as to how they sent the invitations out, I was told, well, it wasn't really a scientific method, but that it was from somebody that, you know, if people showed interest, um, that that's how they got the, the list. And as, when I explained to him that I was the new board member and perhaps my name hadn't been out in the community, uh, but that I would still like to be part of this this um, lecture, um, I was still turned down. 
Um, and so I, I agree with you. I think this could have been a, a very interesting lecture to have gone to, and that's why um, I'm not in favor of spending um, taxpayer dollars of any amount to attend what is obviously a very exclusive lecture with a political agenda behind it. Um, that, that's my opinion. It may not be the opinion of the rest of the board, but I feel very strongly that we not start this. It's a very slippery slope. Um, this is put on by Civitas. Um, I would be just as upset if somebody came to the board and said that they wanted to be reimbursed for going to a lecture put on by moveon.org. I, I just don't think that we need to start this um, slippery slope, as I said. To um, yeah, I have no control over that. I know seating is very limited, um, and uh, it's a presentation, you know, by our lieutenant governor, as well as I think there's like six or seven other people, and I have no problem paying for it with my own money. Um, I do know a precedent was set before when I went to the financial. And that's probably how I got on the list because I did go to their finance uh, seminar and Phil Price, the CFO for the state of North Carolina for the Department of Public Instruction spoke at that. Uh, so I do not feel like this is a political event at all. I think it's um, basically just trying to, um, you know, present uh, different sides of the, the aisle on uh, the Common Core, and um, but it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I'm still going. I'll pay for it. I'll still write a report and uh, let you all know uh, what I heard. And I, d I don't know if they're maybe only allowing one board member per group to go because of the the limited size. I have no idea, no control over that. Which is why I don't think that as a board we should support this. Um, I'm okay with you going as Lisa Baldwin. Um, like I said, I, I encourage you to go. I wish I could have gone. Um, but I do have a, an issue with you going representing the Buncombe County Schools when it is quite clear that this was by invitation only and very okay. exclusive. And you can, you can Google Civitas and Common Core Standards and everything about that is, is political. And like I said, I'd say the same thing if it was on the other side of the spectrum. I do not think that we should go down this path of allowing board members to take taxpayer dollars of any amount to attend meetings that are political in nature. Yeah. No, I said I have no problem with paying out of my own pocket because I feel like it's a worthwhile event to attend. So are okay. you removing this off of the well, agenda? Uh -huh. yeah, I was or we can don't, vote don't either do way. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I just thought I, that's one board member's view, but I didn't know if we wanted to vote on it. Would you I like, didn't make do you the want motion. to hear? Uh, who made the I, I made the motion. Would I, you like to withdraw? I, the, I'm happy to withdraw it if, if I, I move we withdraw the motion from the table and eliminate it, push it, whatever you do. I don't know what to turn. Well, I mean, it's is. just that this is the board procedure for approving. Yeah, and I, I think I haven't said anything about this issue, but I just think it's incredibly important that we. Um, be really consistent and I was trying to think if there's anything that any meetings or anything that I've done um, that would fall on these lines or anything in the future and um, I think I th kind of agree with Amy so it's it's just different exclusive sure. and all. I, mean, I don't I see had no idea they were going to limit people yeah. that you couldn't even call because I sent it to other people and said call right. them and see if you can go if you didn't get an invitation so I don't know so anyway that I mean you asked yeah, for the I, will, I will withdraw the request if that's all right so there's the a motion to from do. Pat to it I'll withdraw the motion it, I'll make the motion to withdraw the motion is that correct terminology you can simply withdraw yeah. the motion I'll withdraw the motion if Amy agrees. whoever seconded it would, would it agrees I agree with it and, then we're done. and the request is withdrawn so we're done okay, okay. thank y'all all right, um, AB Tech, AB Tech uh, Community College Board of Trustee reappointment is the next item that has been moved from the consent agenda to the action agenda. And I, I was moved that we, we make this appointment. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion, please. Is there any discussion? 
I'm sorry, would you please repeat the motion? Uh, the motion from... Uh, My motion is that we, we approve this appointment, or reappointment, I guess. Is a, okay. Maybe well, Tech Community discussion. College Board right, of Trustees Right, and I had requested, um, uh, Dr. Baldwin said that Mr. Campbell would address. My questions were about the process uh, for choosing uh, these appointees, and I had asked if it was this was an Asheville City School appointee, and were we just concurring? Or was this a Buncombe County School appointee to the AB Tech Board? Sure. Did you get the list of questions, Mr. Oh, Campbell? Absolutely, be happy to address it. The uh, the statute is a little unusual. What it says is that if there is more than one Board of Education in a county that would make appointments to a community college board, that each school board has one vote. So that is what the statute says: is that each board is able to vote at that point. The Procedure uh, going back, I, I think, a very long time, and usually not even involving legal counsel, was for the boards to alternate. Uh, and in fact, currently on the board, Richard Hurley and Bill Hart were appointments from this board, and uh, Dr. Don Locke and Dr. John Parham, who is up for reappointment, were selections of the Asheville City Board uh, to serve on the AB Tech Board. It is up to the boards of education as to how they want to structure that, whether they want to have a process. I know that it is done across the state all over the map. Some county boards of education will actually solicit interest or have an application process. Uh, a lot of places it's simply the, there's informal discussion and someone brings forward a name. Some places they may even ask the community college, you know, or, are you looking for a certain type of trustee, somebody who's in healthcare, somebody who's in banking, somebody with legal experience. So the statute does not give any guidance and it's completely up to the school boards how they choose to structure it. The way it's been historically done is the two boards have alternated and respected each other's choice. Since the statute does say that each board gets a vote, it would be appropriate for this board to vote, even though Dr. Parham was the suggestion and the selection of the Asheville City Board at that time. Um, you could, at a later date, have some discussion about a process. I will let you know that your appointments are not up until 2015 and 2016. So there's really nothing imminent as far as an appointment to the AB Tech Board. Again, it's something you could discuss a process. It's completely up to you, but that's why it's on your agenda tonight to vote. Great. All right. Thank you. Sure. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion to reappoint, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right. Um, so now we move on to the consent agenda, and there are the minutes from open session um, from August 8th, closed session August 8th, personnel report, student transfers, advisory council meetings, approval of the board member, uh, no, we've already done that, ICA middle school use of capital outlay, um, and policies of approval. Mr. Chairman, I'm moved. Um, Can I? Oops, I'm yeah, out just, of order. Well, let me just, you, you're not, but let me just clarify one thing. Um, policies for approval, uh, there seems to be a, a lot of energy around that and and the way this is presented is that this is um, the censure of a board member as part of this policies for approval and I want to make sure Can that everybody pull that off now I mean I, I was gonna I didn't realize it was sticking out it's not indented so I don't know I didn't notice and do that separate and, and I think I mean I think it would be there's obviously a lot of interest about that and I think it would be good to have that discussion and I personally didn't capture that. that. So if it's okay with the board, if we can have that discussion and someone will pull that out, would, if the board wants to. Would it be appropriate to pull that out and go ahead and, since we just you've just mentioned all the consent agenda items, go ahead and take a motion and a second on that, and then do the 21-18 after, after that? Would that be appropriate, Mr. Chair? Is that the will of the board? That's fine. Is that fine with everybody? Okay. That's fine. All right, so. So, Mr. Chair. Yes. Will you let me do what I was going to do? Please. Thank you. I'd like to move um, approval of the consent agenda with the exception of the bullet that says policies for approval. Is there a second? I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, moving on to the next one, which is the Board Operations Policy Code 218 Censure for Board Members. May I have a motion, please? I move acceptance of policy 218, 2118, I apologize, censure of board members. Is there a second? I will second it. 
Does there happen to be any discussion? I, I would, uh, just to clarify, because I had some people ask me, um, I, I did part of a sentence a month ago in my questions to Mr. Campbell uh, about this policy, and, and I voted against it, and I'll vote against it tonight, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with the concept, and I'm in agreement with the, the, the thought behind it. But as Mr. Campbell pointed out when I asked him a month ago, all of these things that are now in writing, we could do already. Um, we didn't need it written down, and I'm just not a real big believer in something we could already do, putting it down in writing and putting it on paper. So I, I'm, in, I'm supportive of the concept. If I decided tomorrow or next month, and this wasn't voted on and passed tonight, that there was something that I felt strongly enough about to bring to the board to censure any of us, I could certainly do it. Uh, there's a there's there's enough court case and enough history of these types of things in other places that it can be done. Uh, I'm just not. I'm an old country boy from Georgia. I'm just not in favor of putting it down in writing. Just simply to put it down in writing. Anybody else? Um, I just wanted to bring up that this is pure politics, the censure policy, um, and the ultimate hypocrisy. <laughs> Ms. Churchill just stated that she wouldn't vote for uh, the Civitas training because it was political, um, yet she has seconded the motion uh, for the censure policy, and we'll, I don't know if she'll vote for it, but it's pure political, um, it's pure politics, and um, the only reason for this type of policy is to impugn the reputation of a board member, uh, to intimidate, uh, to keep people to stifle questions and free speech of important issues, and to use this to possibly impact next year's elections. Um, if somebody on this board were threatened with censure, if this passes, they would then have the standing to challenge this censure policy as a matter of law. That means they could file a lawsuit, and that could cost Buncombe County Schools a lot of money. And I don't think any board member here would want to do that. But um, we already have a policy with legal teeth in it. Uh, policy 2116 is for the removal of a board member. And this is very specific. It's from the general statutes that you have to have been um, committed a felony. You have to. Uh, willfully and corruptly omit, neglect, and refuse to discharge any of the duties of office to be removed. Um, a censure policy has no legal teeth whatsoever. It's just a slap on the hand. Um, again, it's a, a political move. Um, this is not going to help our board relations to pass this. It's not going to help our image in the community. Our good name of Buncombe County Schools Again, as one of our speakers said, we may be featured in the Drudge Report um, because uh, it, it makes no sense to me to do this. This is uh, a, a way to justify a witch hunt, basically, <laughs> uh, for a board member that you disagree with and to uh, suppress the minority report on the board. Thank you, Ms. Baldwin. Anybody else? Mr. Chair, I have a... Okay. Well, I mean, I, I'm, in, I'm in agreement with uh, Mr. Bryant. I mean, you can censure any political body, can censure any member at any time. You don't have to have a policy. To me, this policy just gives you a, a procedure by, you know, if one of us wanted to do it to anybody, it gives us a procedure that we all have to follow. But that's Which is already given in the law. Which is already given in the law. Ms. Churchill? Um, well, Dusty alluded to what I was going to say. The reason that I feel that we need this policy is that it will keep us on task to make sure that if we choose to censure somebody that we are doing it in a fair manner and so that it isn't a witch hunt. Um, I, just as one of the speakers said, you know, this could be used for any board member, which that to me does not sound like a witch hunt. That sounds like a fair and reasonable way to deal with somebody who has 
obviously done something against the ethics policy that they have sworn to abide by and maybe it's not enough to remove that board member or arrest that board member but it's enough to say as a board um, we are not going to tolerate this kind of behavior um, but it's not to st stifle discussion um, I feel like we could probably just play back the tape from last month and you know all the reasons that I gave last month are are still valid this time around I just feel like yes it's always been there the ability to do it this is at least a way to do it fairly and allows us the opportunity to do, give a best practice for the best outcome without any kind of political snarkiness behind it. Mr. Chair? Yes, Ms. Franklin. It is not unusual that this board has policies that um, restate things that are stated in the law. And uh, that goes to curriculum, I mean, runs the gamut. I could list all of them. So the argument, I mean, what Mr. Bryant has said is true. It is given, the right is given to us in the law. If in the event that we pass this policy, we have just restated in a very succinct way what the law has given to us, and it is now our policy, as well as given us the authority by the, the, by the laws in the state. Yeah, I'm sorry, but the censure policy is not a general statute. I mean, censuring board members is not anywhere in the law. And in fact, it's an affront to the voters because this is the voter's job and they do this at the ballot box. That's where they censure board members. And it would be a very elitist thing for us to do to presume to take over the job of the voters and to go in and um, uh, basically sanction a board member just to silence them uh, and to set them up for defeat in an election. Um, the voters didn't elect us to be rubber stamps or to vote as a gang. Uh, you, we need a want and Are you announcing and tonight that you're running for re-election next year? No, I'm not let's, sure let's why stay you're singling on the, Let's stay out. on the, if well, we could. I, I, there is an election could, next year. I haven't heard anybody announce hey, that they were running for election. Could we uh, stay on the Nobody's topic, announcing. which is the censure? That's exactly what I'm talking I know, about. I know. I'm talking about that we weren't elected to vote as a gang. We were supposed to have independent thoughts. We're supposed to be critical thinkers. Uh, we should want transparency. This policy is to uh, prevent transparency because it discourages um, the board member from bringing up issues um, that someone may disagree with and decide they want to censure you over. I see this, I mean, I, I'm all for difference of perspectives. I think that's incredibly important in a board, any board. Um, I don't think that a board member, however, should be able to do anything they want to do. Um, they shouldn't be able to provide uh, you know, confidential student information. Um, they shouldn't be able to discuss per personnel. Um, and we need to um, have rules in place that allow us to at least acknowledge that that's been done. Um, and this policy does not limit debate or a difference of opinion. I mean, it refers to our ethics. It doesn't refer to anything besides our ethics and that we have to follow the ethical code. Um, and so I'm going to be voting in favor of that. And I think it's important um, to have rules in place. And I, I understand what Pat's saying, and, and we could do this anyway, but I think it's, it's only the fair thing to do is to have a kind of a procedure for that. And I don't anticipate this board doing this every time there's a disagreement. I mean, if we did that, it would lose credibility, and none of us want to lose credibility. I see this as something that's an extreme, something uh, major has happened, um, some kind of action that, that, that we as a board don't feel comfortable with, and yet we don't really have a good way of reacting, and this is one way that we could react to that. Um, Mr. Campbell, do you have anything to add in terms of a legal framework? Mr. Vice Chair, board members, I think the interesting thing is that uh, what is going on right now is a fantastic ninth grade civics lesson. 
Um, it, I often have teachers tell me that adults seem to worry over things that students see pretty straightforward and pretty clearly. The, everyone is correct about everything they have said from their perspective. Let me talk just briefly what the policy is intended to do and what it's not intended to do. First of all, censure is not a general statute. That is correct. Censure is from common law. Uh, you can probably find censure in English courts if you're a, a student of history. Censure is the expression of a majority of the board uh, that what a board member has done is inappropriate. Uh, you can read that as a disagreement of viewpoints, but that's not typically what censure is intended to be. In fact, censure obviously would have no purpose if the, th there's no reason for the majority to constantly criticize the minority because the majority has all the power. Censure is intended for when a board member does something that a majority of the board feels like should publicly be condemned. Uh, recently, a North Carolina mayor faced possible censure for DWI and using, uh, I think the accusation was either a credit card or some kind of public funds to purchase alcohol. So there's, a, there's an example that has nothing to do with what you board members are kind of discussing and talking about tonight. That was a censure of that publicly elected official. So censure is nothing new, and I don't see this as a newsworthy topic because it's something that's been available out there. What the policy is intended to do, whether you want to have a policy or not, is two things. One, make it an orderly process so that there is something to guide you as a board uh, if it ever were to be an issue that came before you. And second of all, and I, this hasn't been pointed out by anyone, it requires a supermajority. It requires five members of the board. Without a policy, four members of the board could choose to censure a board member. Uh, it requires a second to even get discussed, and the chair can choose not even to put one on the agenda if the chair feels like it's politically motivated or that it has something to do with free speech rather than an action by a board member. Then certainly a majority of the board could vote to put it on the agenda. So really, a censure is going to take, uh, you know, in many instances, four board members to, to even get it on the agenda and then five for it to pass. So that's the intent of it. Um, again, w whether you choose to pass it or not is, is your decision, but I want to make it clear that it is not a censor policy. In fact, uh, if everyone will read their dictionary, suppressing speech is to prevent it from happening. This is to more directed at conduct and potential conduct and the board condemning that conduct. This policy does not and cannot prevent any of you from expressing your viewpoints on an issue through normal board processes. So I just wanted to make that clear. If you don't pass the policy, we still have a requirement of an agenda coming before the board, that they're being advanced notice of what's on the agenda, things being provided to the chairman. So in my opinion, a censure is still not something that would be appropriate for a board member to bring to the attention of the board at a board meeting without advance notice to all board members. That's only fair. The one thing that I think is so important about this policy, again, that hasn't been pointed out, it's designed so that if someone does feel like a board member should be censured, that board member knows ahead of time, that board member has an opportunity to prepare or respond if they want to. So it's all about orderly process and not about a topic that's been around uh, since before colonial times. Um, Thank you. Could I ask a question, Mr. Campbell, as well? Uh, Mr. Campbell, as the author of this censure policy, um, could you clarify for me what uh, Mr. Craig just said, that this censure policy was necessary if a board member provided confidential information or gave out confidential information? Isn't there already a law that says you can't do that? And, and well, I had two issues there in your question. First of all, I didn't hear him say it was necessary to, to mm -hmm. condemn that because, no, there are already laws in place about many of the things that are in your ethics policy, such as disclosing confidential information what about disclosing of students, personnel students or personnel. So that's already covered. Um, again, the censure policy would be the board's expression, and it says in the policy that that's separate than any other processes. So let's take a hypothetical example that a board member has actually violated a law. Well, that violation of law would follow the general statutes, and presumably if it was a criminal law, the DA would be involved. But at the same time, the board would not be permitted or prohibited from censuring the conduct of that board member. And again, um, you don't need the policy to do that. So your question's correct. This policy is not necessary for anything. 
All right, we've had a lot of discussion on this in the last two meetings. Um, all in favor of the motion, let me read it, um, to approve the policy 218 censure of board members, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. aye. All right, I have two opposed. Uh, the motion passes. Um, all right, announcements and future meetings. Uh, the Board of Education will have their regular meeting Thursday, October 3rd at 6.30, and there's gonna be a country, country, countywide, <laughs> countywide, I'm getting tired, a countywide advisory council meeting at Reynolds High School on October 15th at 6 p.m. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Uh, when is that meeting um, in reference? Our founding thought. Thank you. I'm going to ask him a question too.